Good evening and welcome to a series of critical conversations that we're having with, on Scroll with Pi Consulting and Survivors Against TB. My name is Chapal Mehra and I'm a writer and a public health specialist. And these critical conversations during these difficult times are, are meant to explore the many nuances of human life, but also the many stories that combine us. So appropriately today, we're going to be talking about storytelling and stories because in these difficult times, it is stories that bring us together. It is stories that sort of teach us resilience and hope, and most importantly, help us look towards the future. Today, I'm going to be joined by one of India's better known storytellers on film, an old friend, but also someone whose uh, uh, nuance of storytelling is, uh, is perhaps distinct because he picks up beautiful human stories and helps us understand them in depth and with a great deal of humanity and compassion. So I'm going to be joined today by Hansel Mehta, well-known film director and national award winner. You know him from films like Shahid, Simran, City Lights, and so many others. And most recently, uh, the series uh, called Scan. Hello, Harshad, how are you doing? Hansel. I'm, I'm sorry, Hansel. So, <laughs> yeah, so that is, I, I've been thinking this for a long time. You know, they call me Harshad and they call Harshad Hansel. Oh, God. And you know, <laughs> just that I've known you, this is going to be unforgivable because you're never going to let me forget it, are you? It's okay. I mean, I, I'm getting used to it and I didn't expect it from you. <laughs> I know this. This this certainly calls for many drinks when I'm in Bombay. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Hansel, the uh, the purpose of asking you today is not just because we uh, I love your style of storytelling and uh, the many uh, stories that you have told, but also to look at your understanding of how stories are told, and looking back at your work and the work that you have done with uh, in film. I mean. Uh, in a sense, stories are what are keeping us together in this pandemic, isn't it? Absolutely, the OTT, absolutely. Yeah, OTT platforms. The, I mean, I, I'm just loving the kind of storytelling that is emerging in India today uh, from the heartland, from history, from uh, our combined uh, lives and interconnected lives. Uh, but as a storyteller who's widely liked and regarded, people respect you, I want to ask you what attracts you to a story, right? Why do you decide to tell a story, any particular story? I, uh, you know, people always ask me, why does the story attract you? I am usually attracted to the character, uh, you know, the character or the characters. You know, for me, uh, my in, my entry into the story is uh, that interesting character, the character's humanity, the, the possibility of, uh, understanding uh, our world, our times, uh, you know, through uh, a particular character. And, uh, you know, for me, the story is just the character's uh, journey, uh, you know, and a journey through uh, the times that the character is living and the times through which our world has sort of uh, lived. So it's a combination of those things. But yes, my the biggest attraction is always uh, to characters and that's the reason you know when i made aligarh for example uh, you know it was about uh, it was not about a university that uh, had uh, you know uh, suspended professor siras because of his sexual orientation it was about professor siras it was about him about a marathi professor in aligarh and about loneliness you know that his sexual orientation had to condemn him to a life of loneliness. You know, so it was a study of society, it was a study of loneliness, a portrait of loneliness that really attracted me to his uh, uh, story. Uh, and uh, you know, so even with Shahid Azmi, when I made a film called Shahid, so uh, while it was about human rights, about you know, uh, a lawyer fighting for uh, uh, under trials. Uh, uh, the you know defending the defenseless for me it was uh, the story of this uh, boy living in 
pockets of Mumbai that we usually, you know, when we look at Mumbai, we see those big skyscrapers and those massive, uh, you know, that skyline, the sea, the ocean. But behind all that, you know, there are pockets of the city where boys like Shahid reside and the majority of the city resides. So I wanted to get into one of those homes, that one BHK home in which a boy like Shahid resides and, uh, you know, tell, uh, goes through such an outstandingly moving journey. And uh, you mentioned Aligarh and Shahid, and I'm going to come to uh, both of, discussing both of them in detail. I also want to ask about your latest series, and I will not call it Hansal, I will call it Harshad, about mm -hmm. Harshad Mehta. Right. You know, the biggest, uh, uh, by some uh, uh, instances, one of the biggest stock market scams we've ever had. All a lot of it involving public money, um, and also some people. You know, today people are shocked by Nirav Modi and others. But uh, I was reading uh, a report the other day which said that actually it would be well beyond, uh, yeah. and some of those combined actually, uh, if that had happened. Now I want to ask you: people are going gaga over it because yeah. so many people from not from our generation but younger than us are looking at the film, uh, I'm sorry, the series and saying, oh my God, something like this happened. Right. Um, what motivated you to take that up, you know? You know, I've uh, through Harshad's uh, story, I've shared a little bit of my own growing up years mm -hmm. with the audience. So it's, you know, in many ways, a very personal story. You know, again, uh, uh, Mumbai uh, is, uh, which was Bombay then. Uh, so, you know, I grew up in that city. I grew up in Bombay and then became a visitor to Mumbai. Uh, so Bombay was a city with, you know, these pockets, again, these pockets, which had so many Gujaratis. So it was a sort of uh, uh, microcosm that existed in the city. And uh, they were always, you know, the Ghatkopar Gujaratis, the Kandivali Gujaratis, the, uh, you know, uh, Vile Parle Gujaratis. So, uh, I, this is a world I inhabited, a world of pe people who I knew. So one among them suddenly broke out, became this you know, Masiya. And, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of Gujaratis followed him. He was the Pied Piper. He was Robin Hood, Pied Piper. Call him what you may. You know, from Pied Piper, he became a Robin Hood later. Uh, he just led them to the stock market, you know. So an entire generation. Uh, was drawn to um, investment because of Harshad Mehta. And I, I grew up at that time. I I stayed away from that because I was pursuing a life in computers. And uh, but all a lot of my friends did that. And uh, so it's a story of my own aspirations somewhere. It's a story of the aspirations that I've seen around me. And uh, it's the story of India at the cusp of change. You know, so and that's what I say. You know, a character. Uh, place in the center of India at this uh, cusp of change, you know, liberalization. What what we take for granted now had just had not happened. We were waiting for it was 1991. You know, Narsimha Rao had just been sworn in, and uh, you know, we were waiting for things to change, the license rights to go away. So it's about India at that time. Technology had not taken over our lives uh, yet. So and also journalism. I mean, journalism did not. Uh, the way we know it today, it did not perhaps exist as much at that time. So, you know, I thought it was also important to show uh, what journalism was really meant to be through Suchita Dalal's uh, uh, story. Yeah. So for me, it was not only Harshad Mehta, it was also, you know, somewhere to tell people that, you know, journalism used to be at least about finding the story, about bringing out the truth and telling people about it. You know, it was it was not about making noise. It was not about uh, you know uh, being uh, rabble rousers. I mean, it's also interesting. Uh, I just want to say before I ask you my next question that we are asking uh, Hansel live questions. So if you have any questions for Hansel, kisi bhi tarah ke aapke sawal ho, to aap hume Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, kisi pe bhi puch sakte. You can ask them those questions of Hansel on any of those three platforms. Uh, 
I want to follow up on uh, the story of Harsha a little bit because as I was watching it, I was struck by how well it was written. You know, it was written beautifully, and there are so many lines which become iconic. You know, right. like uh, one of the lines that he says, which I love. And which I think holds true in India even today, certainly in this political climate, is that he says, you know, Hindustan mein sabse pehle sabse zada kya banta hai? Steel nahi banta, cement nahi banta, Bhagwan banta. We want a hero, and we want to keep raising that hero. Uh, is Bhagwan that Bhagwan or heroes? Yeah. And he was saying, cricket mein bhi ban raha hai, film mein bhi ban raha hai, politics mein bhi ban raha hai. And so how should I tell the story of that hero who, who in the end falls, of course, but. Yeah, yeah. Was a revolution when he happened. Absolutely, and it's also so influenced. You know, Harshad Mehta, in a way, was influenced. This is the you know, there's a social study in this. You know, where people who grew up in that generation, where Amitabh Bachchan was uh, this icon, uh, you know, the angry young man, uh, you know, in Trishul, rising uh, against all odds, you know, going against his father. So, uh, you know, struggling uh, against uh, this whole class divide. You know, so uh, Arshad was that quintessential uh, Amitabh Bachchan fan. You know, somewhere he lived that dream of uh, playing Amitabh Bachchan in Trishul. So you know, he was a filmy. He was a bit of a filmy guy, and uh, you know, that was an interpretation, of course. You know, Arshad was known for his one-liners, but this was again brilliant uh, writing, as you said, by my. Uh, team of writers, you know, really gifted writers. So, my brief to them was simple: that when we read Sujata Dalal's uh, book, *The Scam*, which was a work of very dense non-fiction, so uh, I said, you know, we have to convert this into a novel, into a page-turner, into uh, this has to read like a John Grisham novel. You know, reason reason I'm quoting John Grisham is because you know he's my and put down he's like if i'm on a long flight i can read to john wilson without really feeling very burdened yeah <laughs> you know and at the same time there's something in it for you there's something uh, you know simplistic but something mm, to hold on to mm. so uh, i said just make it let let's make it like a novel and that i think that has come through that is something that has made the show so uh, riveting it's you know very it's got so every episode is like a chapter A chapter that you know you you move from one chapter to the other in Harshad's life and in a very very seamless manner. I mean, I I also want to say this because this is something that we've discussed even when you were making Ali Gar, right? Where you kept saying, "I don't want this film to be only about human rights because right. that's just one part of the story. Really, there's a law, and you know, it's being used to oppress somebody. But it is also a story about a man." Who just wants to live his life? I remember this conversation when you were writing, yeah. and I was very yeah. touched by it because you were you were putting the individual at the center of it, and then through the individual telling the story. Absolutely. You have this, sorry, sort of uh, observational lens. Like, is that how you look at every story? You know, almost impartially, waiting for it to evolve. Because many times I've seen your story start, the character starts telling the story slowly, in the. I, I try to observe my characters. I try, you know, the moment you uh, have a uh, moment you have a slightly judgmental lens on the character, you know, you cannot uh, be too madly in love with your characters. You cannot, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you can tell a story with passion, but uh, you must. Uh, I I try to stay away from judging my characters. So even if it's Harshad Mehta, for me, Harshad Mehta is. Uh, a man who succumb to greed but he is also somebody who who belongs to uh, this uh, class of uh, you know uh, people who are looked down upon so that's why you know you have the bankers the bankers versus harshad mehta uh, you know so so my story is a lot about class they are also you know that how harshad was looked down upon so but again to that individual i am telling you the story of Uh, our times, you know. So I I always see myself as a chronicler of our times, but through these personal observations, observing uh, these these lives, you know, whether it is even uh, one very difficult film for me was the film that I made on, it was called uh, Omerta, on uh, yeah. Omar Said Sheikh. Now that was a very difficult uh, character to not 
judge and to just observe. But uh, you know, we managed to do that. You know, we uh, Rajkumar played it. Uh, you know, like uh, he would play any other human character. Uh, and I tried to look, just observe this character, follow the character. You know, without being judgmental about it. And so that I mean, that's a tight rope walk. Sometimes you know, you slip to either side. So but it's because the person telling the story eventually is also human. In fact. Uh, a question on Umartha from somebody who's saying that how do you research and construct the kind of a humane frame for character like uh, Umartha? And actually, uh, um, must have been a construction that you've done for other characters because Tahid is still kind of uh, very uh, on the right side uh, of uh, what we believe. Uh, should be done. Can you hear me, Ansel? Yeah, I'm. I'm losing you at times. Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. So I'm saying, uh, somebody just uh, uh, asked this question about how do you construct a humane frame, a humanity around a character like Omarta? Is it difficult? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about difficult. What I try to do is, uh, uh, you know, uh, because I because I'm driven by characters. My story is my. Storytelling is driven by characters, so I try to enter the character's world. I try to live that life that the character has lived through uh, my actors. You know, I just we try to explore. So uh, when I mean, it's it's just uh, I have never thought about how difficult it is. You know, I mean that that is half the. I'm sorry, we're losing you, uh, Hansal. Uh, I think we've just lost Hansel briefly. Yeah. Uh, I think we have him back. Yeah. Oh, we lost you for a little bit. I know. This is Mumbai uh, yeah. and poor infrastructure. This is the Where? geo. This is the geo uh, internet uh, network, which never works. Okay. All right. I okay. I'll. I'll I'll let that pass. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, uh, yeah. But I wanted to ask you another question, which is around Harshad. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I can. I wanted to ask you uh, 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 another question around Harshad. Because Harshad is like that poster boy. You know, it's the lower middle class poster boy that inspires people throughout. You know, he's not. A big industrialist son. He 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 doesn't come from the right class, and then he zooms ahead. Uh, how did you research? Because there's Suchita's version of the story, right. which is a journalistic dense documentation, bit by bit, about how public money and corruption were used, right? And then there is the human side. How did you explore the human right, side? Right. A uh, lot of it is from uh, research uh, that you know my writers did on uh, Harshad with people that he knew, he, uh, his friends. A lot of it is also borrowed from our own observations of similar people. Mm. So you know, uh, because the person himself is not alive to tell his story, uh, and we had no access to Harshad's family, uh, so we. Uh, I think a lot of it is imagined. A lot of it is, an, as I said, it's an exploration. You know, we've tried to, uh, from the available information, we've tried to construct uh, the characters, all the characters, you know, each and every character. We've tried to construct it from uh, the bits that were available uh, in the book, from in public domain, or from people who knew them closely. So yes, I mean there was like a lot of research that went into this uh, uh, effort, but eventually, I mean, I don't, uh, I never uh, become part of the research because I don't like getting too attached to research. You know, I have somebody reminding me if something is factually going off the mark, but I like to uh, take a character and then uh, you know sort of build an imagined story, the drama. For me, it is uh, eventually storytelling is about characters and the drama surrounding those characters. So, I mean, if the show is 
revetting today it's because the focus is on the drama uh, and you know in spite of the dry finance financial terms and the dryness of the uh, the perceived dryness of such a subject uh, you know we've used all these things as dramatic devices rather than uh, as uh, you know uh, big uh, studies of uh, the you know workings of the market i also need to ask you a little bit about the people you choose to play these characters because uh, i mean one of the things that is remarkable about all the films and the movies that you make is that there is a set of relatively new uh, but hugely talented actors who you bring to the scene and give them author backed roles which basically launch them i mean rajkumar rao is one such example uh, fountain of talent uh um, most of the times you've chosen people who are not stars or well known in that sense is that a deliberate choice is that uh, well it it began with a lack of access you know uh, so you know when there's a lack of access when there is uh, you know adversity uh, if uh, you know either you give up saying that you know i'm not getting stars so this career is not for me or you fight so that's what i've done i mean 25 years into this uh, business and i've learned to fight my way out and uh, in the process what it has done uh, is it's given me this uh, it has honed my instincts and it has given me this uh, the i won't call it courage but it has given me a method by which i am able to uh, you know work with newer talent mm. i'm able to uh, find that talent i'm able to work with them and i'm able to nurture them and i'm able to pitch them i'm able to raise money to work with them you know most important you know everything else uh, you know i can go on and on about how talented i am but if i can't raise money for it uh, then it's pointless so i've managed to always raise money for uh, whatever kind of stories i've told for and to be able to back the talent that i have got you know so whether it is rajkumar uh, in you know five films that we've done together or it is uh, prati gandhi now in scam 1992 i mean uh, it gives me it 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 feels like a vindication that you believed you nurtured a relationship and uh, that relationship uh, has led to some success for the other person so we have both succeeded because of each other and it's also kind of a vindication of the story right because exactly. yeah because you you sort of feel like everybody tells you a film will do well or a series will do well when there is a fantastic yeah. face in front of it but here are examples where story has made them stars and and uh, that and i think that is uh, the earlier earlier we realized that you know i i'm a big i'm a big uh, consumer of uh, you know uh, long form storytelling and the long form uh, storytelling on ott has proved one thing you know whether it is the wire uh, breaking bad mad men you name uh, you know some really really landmark uh, uh, shows and uh, you realize that you know they, those shows and their scripts have created these new stars you know new age stars that have come out that have emerged out of is exceptional work whether you look at it home grown a uh, show like patal lok mm, you know the, yeah. the you know to showcase an actor of jaydeep's phenomenal uh, talent otherwise you know i mean jaydeep was relegated to doing stuff he you everyone knew he was good but uh, he carried patal lok on his shoulders and uh, you know had it not been for this uh, kind of uh, uh, you know i think just before us uh, patal lok also realized it's not about the star it is about the story it is about the script and you know writing the emphasis on writing and the time given to i mean we, we took almost 2 years to write uh, scam you know and so so we've nurtured it we have uh, uh, you know literally uh, you know so we've seen the script blossoming from uh, an idea to a 550 page uh, manuscript 
so you know each and every page has been written with care with a lot of uh, discussion with a lot of argument so uh, you know it's all the result of that so you know whoever you know if uh, people from the business watch this they must understand that you know stories uh, have been converted into scripts it's great to have a good idea but an idea becoming a great script uh, you know needs to be nurtured it needs investment of time and money and a lot of patience i mean i i have a few questions already coming but i do want to ask you one question before i start taking them up what is of course that uh the, the emergence of this ott platform in fact i had arjun mathur on uh, on a similar conversation uh, a month ago and he was talking about i i asked him that you know would you have come a bollywood star in a sense because it hadn't been for the ott platforms the kind of talent that we are seeing emerging you know whether it is through patal lok or it is through mirzapur or it is through scam is not something we would have seen uh any time soon in through the film industry very easily right the the barriers to access are uh, and to rising can be uh, phenomenal for somebody yeah yeah it's unfortunately you know we uh, we've built a business model out of a business uh, that does not really prove itself that keeps disproving itself time and again uh, you know so just when you feel that one business model is working three films fail and a new uh, uh, business model emerges so it's it's basically executives looking for a quick fix uh, you know uh, creative uh, the creative industries thrive upon innovation there's they thrive upon uh, this freedom of ideas freedom of execution and uh, that is not possible if you are going to bind it down to a model uh, what is the easiest model you know in the absence of uh, safe safe scripts or stories the safety net is a star hmm. hello yeah. you have this star okay to film bana lo so this is yeah. see this is lazy this is lazy uh, uh, i would say uh, you know business uh, management you know that you find the easiest what is the easiest thing you know i will throw money and throw it's not by money anyway so i will throw money at you just get a star you know mm-hmm. and that has damaged uh, the business immensely you know uh, shekhar kapoor in fact in between had been tweeting that you know studio executives must uh, be taken through a film film appreciation course they must uh, go through because you know very often i mean we we encounter executives who uh, even if they have uh, been through some sort of film film school or film studies uh they very soon succumb to this uh, babu kind of uh, attitude towards you know, the creative uh, uh, aspect i mean you know uh, nurturing uh, you know making films making uh, you know telling stories is a lot about uh, being a patron of the arts mm. uh, you know you have to be a patron of the arts and yes Uh, you should expect a return on investment but that is by minimizing risk not by maximizing uh, you know investment and uh, actually running a larger risk you know you minimize risk you uh, you know budget carefully you market sensibly uh, so the the entire system somewhere was had been so flawed that i think these 6 months have given us a chance to introspect on that Suddenly, the entire industry collapsed like a pack of cards. And and the entire model was actually like you're saying, not story based or not even engagement based. It was a kind of an event based, star based model, which uh, which sort of without the story went packing in this pandemic. The sto- story not being at the center. You see the story. I mean, uh, if it had not been for stories, you know, we wouldn't have Rajkumar Rao. we wouldn't have a newton we would not have a uh, aishwan kurana uh, yeah. you know with a bala with a badhai ho so yes there have been you know there have been some shining examples uh, but there have been very few i i i have to take questions and i'm uh, yeah. i'm going to ask our 
audience to also keep sending us questions. Faiz Khan, who's obviously loved the series, Scam, is saying, um, you know, I loved how it was written. I was expecting more to be shown about the nexus between uh, the political uh, people and share markets played in those times a bit more. Was this a mindful effort to steer away from that space? I mean, I guess what he's trying to say is none of this happens without political patronage, does it? Well, we, we've, we've hinted towards it. You see, when we are also telling these kind of stories, we have to be responsible. Mm. We cannot speculate wildly. I mean, you know, very often there's this wild speculation that, you know, somebody went. So even when you spoke, when we spoke about Harshad Mehta and the exchange of money with the PMO's, uh, you know, staff, that he had taken that suitcase. It is based on the information that he had put out in the public domain. Uh, it was based on the uh, press conference that he held along with uh, Ram Jethwalani. So, uh, uh, you know, it cannot be, uh, it cannot be, uh, you know, uh, when you're dealing with a true story and when you're trying to, uh, uh, you know, talk about systemic rot, I think uh, whatever, uh, you are commenting, you, it needs to be done responsibly. So, I mean, the, whatever little idea we had about the nexus between politics and uh, business people, we've tried to show it, but we've tried to show it with responsibility and uh, only based on substantiated information. I also wanted to ask you a little bit about your own journey to filmmaking, because I think this discussion is going to be incomplete if I don't bring you to that, because you didn't start out as a filmmaker, you didn't want to be a filmmaker necessarily. I mean, you didn't get to be there. And then you are exceptional filmmaking work. Tell us a little bit about your journey of coming to filmmaking. Uh, well, I think, uh, you know, I, I still wonder. I wake up every morning and I wonder, you know, what the fuck am I doing here? You know, it's. Uh, uh, because uh, it still feels like a total surprise, you know, the day, uh, uh, you know, just today I was driving in the car and I was telling my daughters about an actor who gave uh, the first shot of my first film, uh, you know, so there was an actor called Sharad Smart. And I was telling them, you know, this was way back in 1996. And that was the first time I had seen a film camera on the first day of my film shoot. It was the first time I had heard the sound of a film, uh, of film running. Uh, so, yeah, it's. I think uh, I, uh, you know, while uh, I'm quite agnostic about God and other things, but uh, uh, I have, uh, I have this belief that I, I had a calling, and uh, you know, uh, the fact that I've been around for so many years. I made Kana Kazana in 1993. So I believe my first calling was food. Uh, I believe my first calling was cooking. And uh, so I made Kana Kazana. But I realized that there was a bigger piece out there waiting for me. So I've sort of just landed up into situations where life has led me on. You know, I've, I've just, uh, like the Devanand song, my Zindagi ka saath nibata chala gaya. You know? So I think that's what happened to me. I just went along with life. And I, mean, uh, I don't know how I've made 16 films, how I've made so many shows, how I've spent these last uh, 27 years since Khana Kazana uh, was made. So uh, yeah, but that journey, it's, it's been an eventful journey. I was a computer programmer before that and uh, had absolutely no idea that I would be doing this. But I must tell you, I had a I had an uncle, a very old uncle, who used to play chess with us. And uh, he had a, his hobby was astrology. So when I was 16, he wanted to teach me how to see horoscopes. And uh, so he looked at my horoscope and he said, you know, there's something creative, there's something to do with film. I don't know what it meant. And at that time I was studying to be an engineer. So I said, uh, maybe it's something to do with x-rays, maybe it's something to do with medical electronics. You know, X-ray films. Uh, so, yeah, but as he, he told me, and I, I never, I never believed it. Hmm. And and I want to ask you this because you know everybody thinks that they have a calling, 
and uh, I, I hope everybody finds their calling. But the initial years of struggle, you know, because today everybody sees a success story. Everybody says, "Are bhai, badi achhi filmen banate hain, apna niche create kiya hai." But what were the early uh, fears, apprehensions, doubts like? Because that is what people need to remember, that, you know. Of course, I mean that, and that I've been fortunate that uh, you know I've stumbled way too many times. I've failed way too many times, and. Uh, I always hold those failures very, very close to my heart. Uh, those failures are very dear to me because uh, they've made me who I am. They've made me resilient. They've made me into a fighter. They've uh, ensured that I don't give up. Uh, and you know, they've pushed me to do better every time. You know, so uh, if today Scam is a successful show that it's meeting this kind of adulation and love, I think I owe it to. in a big way to a, fi- a film like simran you know which did things did not go right uh, in that film and uh, all that happened there that entire drama i think somewhere uh, gave me this um, uh, it motivated me to uh, you know uh, do better to to tell a better story to be a better director to be a better person So yeah, but I think the struggles. Uh, all I tell people is that don't give up. And uh, you know, very often people give up on their dreams because they limit their own dreams. You know, uh, so uh, I mean, I'm sounding like some pop psychologist, but that's the truth. Uh, you know, when I made Shahid, I had no money to make the film, and uh, no stars wanted to work with me. We approached a few stars. They either met me or. Uh, some of them did not even meet me they, they they felt it was a waste of time so ultimately i mean i i found rajkumar rajkumar and i uh, hit it off really well and i felt that you know this is a talented boy i should be making the film with him i felt very strongly about it my producer said look i don't have money so we made that film in 35 lakhs now well, i had people yeah so i had people with me who said that uh, this film cannot be made in less than 4 and 1/2 crores now i had two option one is to give up and say okay, you know screw it i'm not going to make it uh, let me you know live off my wife's salary uh, you know uh, and we'll see if something happens now very often that's what we do that you sort of give up and then slowly slowly you start killing killing that uh, dream within you okay? so i did not let the dream die uh, i said if it's 35 lakhs we'll make it in that we shot it i mean the 10 people who shot uh, on that unit uh, so it was me my son jay uh, who was a co-director in scam and uh, we had uh, the director of photography with two people and some people just uh, you know couple of runners that's it and that was the, that was the entire unit that went and shot the film and then the actors so uh, you know the actors were told that there's no there's no makeup room there's nothing there's no makeup man also So you do your own makeup, wear your own costumes, uh, change wherever you find a place, a clean place. Just go and change. You know? So our first task is to be wherever we would go to shoot to find a bathroom nearby where the actors could change and use the washroom. But yeah, we uh, it was made with a lot of ad- under a lot of adversity. It still took eleven months because to raise thirty five lakhs. Also, I had to borrow money from my father in law. I had to. Uh, you know, we used to raise money every day and then shoot. So, 35 days of shooting uh, took 11 months. But both Rajkumar and me uh, somewhere believed in what we were doing. There was a passion, and that passion sort of pulled us through that entire phase. And uh, eventually, that uh, that one decision to work together, Rajkumar and me, and to make the film in that much of money. i think has made me what i am today it won you the national award i mean uh, a lot of people yeah. uh, should know this because a 35 lakh rupee film made with a crew of 10 people and um, and sort of made over 11 months won you a national award i i and, have and a, it was acquired it was acquired by disney pictures later on you know so we oh, we okay. then after which we paid everyone so everybody had worked free So we paid little bit of money to everyone, and the film ended up costing seventy-five lakhs. Then, okay. 
Now, I'm also wanting to go a little bit over a couple of questions that have come to us. There is one particular question and also a request. Somebody wants to uh, be, uh, assist you. So I'm going to uh, uh, thing. So I'm going to send that request to you separately. But uh, also, Anurag is asking that what were the challenges you faced during Scam 1992? I mean, suddenly this series, suddenly everybody is uh, is seeing your work only for Scam 1992. I wish they would also remember Shai, then Aligarh, and uh, no, others. But they, it has led to people, you know, uh, actually finding my work. You know, all mm -hmm. my work, luckily, thanks to OTD, it's on all the platforms. So people have been visiting my previous work and. Uh, Realizing that okay, this guy is not bad, uh, you know. So uh, I have no complaints, and I mean, scam is. I mean, it is. I'm very proud of what we made. Uh, you know, it is. Uh, again, uh, uh, it was not exactly. You know, the the impression people have is that when you make things for OTT, there's a lot of money. It's an unlimited flow of money. Scam was made with a within a very limited, very tight uh, uh, budget, and uh, I think. Just the quality of the team that I had, right from my writers to the uh, technicians that worked with me, you know, to have my son as the co-director, sort of holding my hand throughout, and uh, uh, then to have a director of photography who was not even born when this scam took place, you know, who was who was 24 years. So my the average age on the team was around 26, 27, and that I think uh, lends the film its very unique energy. You know, there's a young energy uh, that uh, uh, tells you a story from uh, an earlier era. So you're normally used to a period drama being uh, narrated, uh, you know, with a vis visual language, which is also old fashioned. Mm -hmm. So there's a very modern visual language to tell a story of those olden times. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to ask you this uh, question because we are in the last 10, 15 minutes. And I'm getting more questions. Uh, you know, you're one of the people in the industry who often speaks out uh, on political issues, on social issues, on you've spoken about journalism and what it has become today, which uh, is a sad commentary in itself about what journalism in India is turning slowly. There are reservoirs of good quality, but you know, largely commercialization, or as many people say the Fox TV phenomenon. India, but uh, you have been challenging these norms publicly, openly on social media platforms. You take positions. Uh, um, is that something you feel compelled to do? I mean, I'm asking you this not as a friend, but as people who admire you, because a lot of people who are in the same position that you, uh, as you are sitting quietly and don't feel the need to have an opinion. Um, well, uh, many years back, you know, uh, when I started blogging, I, I felt this sense of liberation. I started writing openly. So I was also one of the, uh, you know, the scared, uh, uh, you know, fearful uh, persons, as, as so many of us are. And then we started blogging, and there was some something, there was some release that happened when I started writing. I started writing openly, and then I realized that you know uh, there was a lot stored within me, a lot that I needed to. So I I feel compelled. I mean, I just feel compelled and I, I speak up and I don't, I speak about, about things that I feel strongly about. I really don't have a specific political leaning. Uh, mm -hmm. My, uh, I have a very strong sense of right and wrong. That's it. You know, and uh, if I find that something is wrong, I just feel that I need to uh, speak about it. Not that it always makes a difference, but uh, not speaking suffocates me. I do it for myself. What about? Uh, I'm going to ask you this question because you worked with a big star, and you worked with who was very talented, arguably, and you worked with a uh, with people who are virtually unknown. How is it? What's the difference like? I mean, um, what are the I, mean, I think uh, ultimately, for me, uh, you know, I always tell people, you know, I don't. Uh, I work with actors and actors play characters. You know, you might be the protagonist, but the protagonist is also a character. And for me, it is the commitment and the surrender of that particular actor towards the character that attracts me to them. 
you know so even with kangna i mean it was not it was not the most uh, happy journeys that we had and it's not because of a startup i think it was you know, many things so i don't want to get into that but uh, her commitment to playing that character was you know unquestionable she played it she was not bothered about how she looked about her stardom uh, on screen she played praful patel with complete surrender you know she let her hair loose she wore the same jeans for the entire film the same pair of jeans you know she wore that cap she hid her eyes so many times and uh, you know that commitment to playing the character and that's all i look for you know uh, and uh, uh, as long as you know i may i have the power to uh, you know bring uh, this exceptional talent together i am able that i am able to showcase so much exceptional talent that we have around us you know i will continue doing that uh, i think it is very important for the uh, for for my own uh, sanity and for the sanity for the growth of uh, this industry that we are in that more and more talent uh, gets a platform to actually showcase their uh, you know true self their their uh, their ability uh, to the people and i think we have the ott platforms to thank for that truly i also want to ask you this question now recently because of certain events the film industry has been under a lot of attack there is a lot of speculation and in fact i was reminded uh, by this wonderful article written by ram guha uh, you know uh, one of the country's uh, uh, better known writers and intellectuals who basically said uh, that you know why is it under attack i mean basically making you wonder if the film industry is often sometimes or the creative arts are often sometimes the easiest scapegoats in a crisis are they do you think they become scapegoats easily well particularly in this uh, you know we uh, we have made ourselves very vulnerable on this on social media where uh, you know these anonymous they are anonymity or invis- invis- invisibility and are you know hiding behind some assumed identity uh gives us empowers us it has empowered us to uh, uh either spark out spark uh, spark a revolution or to abuse you know, so it is often misused and uh, you know that uh, that's unfortunate you know uh, ultimately during this entire pandemic if there is we the industry as an industry we've gone through tremendous loss uh, not only financially we lost some of our Uh, most uh, you know promising and gifted people you know whether it is rishi kapoor whether it is irfan khan or whether it is sushant singh rajput and so many other people we you know we have been dealing with uh, the sense of loss uh, uh, and uh, to add to that you know the the constant barrage of abuse while you know we are striving to uh, give you content you know uh, going through great risk to shoot to be able to uh, edit to be able to you know uh, mm-hmm. deliver something to you to deliver entertainment to you it's, you know entertainment there's no better time uh, than yeah. this for us to be yeah. able to give you entertainment to entertain you you know so i'm not saying don't pat us on the back but don't don't condemn us like this you know we uh, are as, as human as everybody else and that i mean uh, and we make stories about you you know so i i felt i mean it was a time i felt really hurt i felt very very uh, bad and i i spoke about it i was the only one who sort of took on some of the trolls i also felt it was some of it was motivated and uh, it is sad it's that the world has come to this that you know uh, we uh, live in a time where there's a president of uh, a democracy who uh, makes all these statements on uh, twitter he uses twitter uh, to display his uh, prejudices his intellect and thank god he is uh, on his way out yeah yeah and it i mean it's a, it's a, and it's a it's a symbol of the times that we are living in you know people uh, uh, a lot of depravity and a lot of uh, political toxicity uh, has mm-hmm. found expression uh, on social media 
I, I also want to uh, turn to sites slightly more interesting stuff because we are being asked those questions as well. So let me ask you, and these were questions that I also wanted to ask you uh, a little bit about your peers' work or people who you admire. You know, like what, for instance, um, one of the questions is what is who is one of your favorite directors? And when I say Indian cinema, I really mean across languages because you know there's work in uh, in other language cinemas is often ignored but very spectacular. So who who would you think of the three really exceptional people in your? I I mean it's very difficult. You know uh, there is there's some some seriously exceptional talent that we have around in our country, and to just single out one person is very difficult. So I have I have peers, I have contemporaries. So there is there's this very resurgent Anubhav Sinha, whose work uh, I admire for its accessibility. You know, he he talk, tells you important uh, stories and makes them. Uh, you know, he's de developed a way of communicating with a larger audience. You know, so from whom you learn, you learn a lot from your peers. There's Anurag, who is constantly experimenting, constantly. You know, shifting genre uh, constantly. He's not afraid of failing. Uh, mm. You know, and that is that is Anurag's greatest quality. And you sort of you uh, get a lot of energy from them. Then there's Vishal, who is uh, you know always so meticulous about his craft. You know, whether it's writing, whether it's music, whether it's direction. There's a meticulous crafting in whatever he does, uh, and. Uh, you know, there's uh, this flashes of real uh, genius moments that, and there's, I mean, Vikram Motwani, who I've envied for the longest time. I keep messaging him saying that, you know, how do you, I mean, I I, I see his work, I, I feel I've excelled, then I see something that Vikram does, and I feel, what the hell? You know, so you have him, and then you're seeing, I mean, there's some exceptional work. There's, there's Vetri Maran uh, from the south, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, his Visarnai was a tour de force. I mean, that I have yet to see something so powerful and cinematic, you know, and so political. I mean, he's a political filmmaker in a landscape and a popular political filmmaker in a landscape which is surrounded by very, very populist cinema. Uh, so, I mean, I admire his work uh, uh, immensely. I mean, some of the stuff that is coming out of Malayalam cinema is yeah. exceptional, exceptional work. So I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to admire uh, around us, you know. And I mean, then you have all these uh, striking, uh, uh, you know, new films. You have uh, uh, a film that is releasing soon. Uh, I think uh, Sony. I think it's releasing next week. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, uh, yes, I think Sir, Sir by Rowena Gera. So mm. I saw it at a festival, and I mean, it's a brilliant film. It's releasing. Uh, Finally, next week. I mean, those uh, every now and then a new filmmaker emerges, and there is this shift uh, in there's a growth in the language of storytelling, and that's all. I I, I cannot. I'll be unfair if I name one person. You know, there's so many people that you're constantly learning from. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I David, do. David Dhawan is one of my big. I always pick his brain. Okay. You know, I, I, he got. He called me after watching Scam, yeah. and, uh, and so he started talking to me, and I started asking him questions because I always marvel that you know that level of conviction in uh, you know this suspension, whole suspended disbelief uh, requires uh, a different kind of skill set. So I want to ask you the last question because we are completely out of time, but. Um, I'm going to make this brief uh, and uh, just a small question about which is your favorite piece of work from your 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 26 years working. I'm going to I, you know choose 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 between your children. Come on, Aisha. It's still very difficult. But very still, difficult. one one that you uh, think was exceptional and you think it's very close to you in a particular way. Well, scam 1992 for now. It's very close because it's just released. <laughs> But it is. I mean, it's very, very close. You know, it's. Uh, I think, uh, as uh, in terms of craft, uh, it uh, has helped me grow. Hmm. All right. So thanks so much, Harshad, for making time for this conversation. Again, on again, call me Harshad. Oh, Hansel. Oh my God, that is two rounds of drinks now. Yes. Oh my. <laughs>
<laughs> so Hansel, thanks so much for making time for this conversation. It was lovely having you. And, thanks, we'll, and see you in Bombay sometime soon with yeah. Safina. And yeah. you all next week with someone, another one of our uh, well-known interlocutors. Thank you and take care. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.